hello, my name is Mike, and today we're going to be looking at Mark chapter 10, verses 36 to 42. So grab a Bible, and let's dive in. Now, as always, we've got to start with context. Mark chapter 9 is the transfiguration. Jesus finally reveals himself in his glory to his disciples, only to tell them that now he's going to have to head towards Jerusalem and his death. And what follows is a series of interactions and teachings where Jesus begins to model what this king and kingdom looks like. The sort of king and kingdom who dies for the sake of others. We saw that in verse 13, where Jesus welcomes the little children to himself. We saw it a little bit later in chapter 10, when a rich young man comes to Jesus asking what he must do to inherit eternal life. And Jesus essentially says to him, you must go lower. In verses 32 to 34 of chapter 10, Jesus tells his disciples again that he's going to have to die. And not just die, but he's going to be mocked and betrayed and spat on before being put to death. And then immediately preceding this week's text, Jesus tells his disciples that whoever would be the greatest among him must be a servant and must become a slave even. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. We see Jesus flipping any preconceived notions regarding a king and a kingdom on their head. And we see that again here in today's passage. Now it's worth noting that this story, the story of blind Bartimaeus, only exists in Mark's gospel. Matthew, Luke, John don't include it. And so it seems like it must be a pretty important passage for Mark. He writes, starting in verse 46, and they came to Jericho. And as Jesus was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a great crowd, Bartimaeus, a blind beggar, the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside. Now Jericho at this point is a fairly prosperous, prominent town. Not exceptionally so, but it was along the way from Galilee to Jerusalem. And it's worth noting that there is still at this point a large crowd. They haven't abandoned Jesus yet. And then we have Bartimaeus. Why is Bartimaeus, this blind roadside beggar, named Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus? After all, he's not really anybody important at all. He's a blind beggar. In those times, those unable to earn a living any other way would normally have sat along the roadside, a busy roadside, and begged. He would have been among the lowliest and most vulnerable. And yet, in Jesus' kingdom, the lowly and vulnerable, they have names. In Jesus' kingdom, the low and vulnerable is somebody. He's a person worthy of a name and a story. Mark goes on in verse 47. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. It's the lowly who recognized Jesus for who he is, who sees him for who he is, the son of David. It's the one who is socially powerless, who recognizes Jesus' authority and asks him to have mercy on him, to have compassion on him, to help him in his affliction. And the crowd doesn't know what to do with this. And so we see in verse 48, and many rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he cried out all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Now we've seen this before, where some of Jesus' followers rebuke the unimportant, afraid that they're going to be a bother to Jesus. We saw this just back in chapter 10, verse 13, when the little children were being brought to Jesus and the disciples rebuke them. And Jesus says, no, no, no. He gathers them in his arms. And we see it here again. Jesus' followers trying to act as gatekeepers keeping out the socially unacceptable or insignificant. Now, Bartimaeus isn't intimidated, however, or perhaps he's just desperate enough. Either way, he doesn't seem embarrassed by his behavior, even though others might be. Instead, he doubles down, calling out to Jesus, Son of David, have mercy upon me. And we see in verse 49, Jesus stopped and said, call him. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. Jesus hears his cry. He hears the cry of the desperate, the vulnerable, the lowly. He hears his persistent faith, and Jesus responds. 
Now, this is worth pausing to discuss for just a second. Because through most of Mark's gospel, when somebody calls out Jesus' name, usually a demon, Jesus has consistently been shushing them, telling them not to speak or to reveal his identity. And we've said this before, Jesus wants to reveal his identity on his terms and his timeline. And here, Bartimaeus isn't shushed. It seems like Jesus is okay being named by someone who really isn't that significant. And I think this says something about Jesus, about who he is as the king, who he values, the sorts of people he desires to be bearing witness to him, the sort of people who recognize him for who he is. Now, check this out. In verse 49, Jesus turns to his followers and says, call him. Just a verse before, his followers were gatekeeping, were shushing him, were trying to keep him out. And rather than correcting them, instead, Jesus draws them in. He invites his followers to participate. And in doing so, teaches them a new way to interact, a new way to live. He models compassion and mercy. And in doing so, Jesus invites Bartimaeus to come to him, even as he invites his followers to participate in his mission. And they do. They tell Bartimaeus, take heart, he's calling to you. Now, this mimics Jesus' call to so many of his disciples. Here, his followers say, he's calling to you, get up and come. Just as Jesus had said to them at one point, get up, come, follow me. Now, Jesus promised to make his disciples fishers of men, and this is what he's doing right here. He's teaching them, he's showing them how to be fishers of men. He's drawing them into that mission. Hey, this is how you're a fisherman. You call people to me. You encourage them. Take heart. Jesus is calling to you. And Bartimaeus responds. In verse 50, throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus right away. There, I love this, the immediacy in his response, the, the sense of expectation that is palpable. And Jesus said to him, what do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said to him, Rabbi, let me recover my sight. Now Jesus and all of his followers, they all know what Bartimaeus wants and needs. And yet still, Jesus asks him. Jesus treats him as a person. He invites him into a, a conversation, into a relationship. And in doing so, he communicates that he's not just some fairy godmother or some cosmic Pez dispenser here to give people what they want. Rather, he's here to speak with them, to be in relationship with them, even as he responds to them in mercy. He treats them as a person. He gives them not just what he needs on the outside, but what his heart needs as well. And Bartimaeus, in response, he states the obvious. Well, I, I want my sight, but he's treated like a person. I just love that about Jesus here. And Jesus responds in verse 52. And Jesus said to him, go on your way. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he recovered his sight and followed him on the way. Now, there's just a few things I'd like to highlight here in this final verse. First, Jesus sends him. He sends him. But if you look closely, Bartimaeus doesn't leave. Instead, the text says that he follows Jesus on his way. He joins him in his mission, joins him in his journey towards Jerusalem. Second, and this may be stating the obvious, Bartimaeus is healed by his faith. Jesus makes that clear. And so here's the question I wanna ask as we wrap up. What does faith look like in the healing of blind Bartimaeus? What does faith look like in the healing of blind Bartimaeus. I think it looks like persistence. Bartimaeus doesn't give up, but continues to call out to Jesus. It looks like audacity. He's shushed, but he still he calls out all the louder. It looks like expectation. He jumps up immediately in response. I think it, it looks like knowing who Jesus is, son of David, the one who has authority actually here to change things. Lastly, I think faith looks like a fixation on Jesus. Bartimaeus won't let go. 
And even after he's healed, he still goes with Jesus along on his way. Thank you so much for joining me this week as we looked at Mark 10 verses 46 to 52, the story of the healing of blind Bartimaeus. If this was helpful for you, please consider liking, sharing, subscribing, or leaving me a comment, and I'll see you next time.